on here, guys? And today we're talking about the Insta360 Go. Check this thing out. It fits on this really cool necklace that has a magnet in there. And you look just like Iron Man whenever you wear it around. Pretty cool, right? Is an ancient Chinese war mantle meaning advice. So this tiny camera has been taking FPV by storm storm and it fits in this little to-go case that's just like the similar shape of a set of airpods and about the same size too and you take this little plastic thing off that will probably get lost in about two days and it fits in here just with magnets how does that work Fucking magnets. How do they work? and it automatically begins charging itself up now this has been the darling of every fpv reviewer that has touched it but i'm here to tell you a little bit of a different story we're not just going to cover all of the good things about this and there are a few good things about this but there's also some bad things too and i haven't really heard a lot of people talking about those so we're going to cover them stay tuned let's cover some of the good things first though let's start off with that this is a tiny 20 gram camera and originally it only had 60 seconds of recording time that has been fixed that has been updated and insta360 is actually calling the five minute recording mode fpv mode because they know that we want to be able to utilize this device for our flights and by extending to five minutes it really is an inclusive step to get our community to jump on board uh nurk actually beat me to the punch uh, <laughs> on his review but uh that's okay. Nurk is a friend to all of FPV. Uh, I think he's quickly approaching Mr. Steele as like one of the coolest personalities in FPV. He's hanging out with Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson. I mean, props to that in my, my book. So it is 20 grams. It does record five minutes. Um, it charges on this little thing really conveniently. It's one button recording. You can manipulate two button push three button push for different commands the default is two button push goes to hyperlapse three button push goes to slow-mo that is really really cool uh, most of the what we care about though is the built-in stabilization which they're calling uh like i forgot what the hell they call it but uh they call it something catchy uh and it works okay you know it's not on the par of gopro um, this is not a GoPro Hero Black competitor. It's not even a GoPro Hero 7 competitor. The footage is okay. It's better than what we can get currently. And it really gives you the opportunity to get some great HD footage on something like this. This is the prototype space grade Armitan Tadpole 3 inch. So here is the case that it comes in, or the box rather. This has a bunch of accessories in there, a couple of sets of cables, this little manual that no one's ever going to read. Then it has a couple of cool accessories um, that have double-sided tape on them. And that will allow you to be able to mount them to different places. This one has like a little hinge clip for like a shirt or something like that. And then there is the more standard one that you've probably seen that has a little... Uh, three tripod mount under there and then this one just sticks so if you wanted to you know be able to move it on and off to somewhere frequently double side tape this onto somewhere and it just sticks on with magnets magnets how do they work and then there's this cool thing which is a necklace that goes on your shirt you wear it under your shirt and then it sticks to the magnet so this just kind of sits on your chest like as if you were iron man awesome um, uh, if you get the bundle package, you also get a carrying case and a few other accessories. I'll probably include a little picture of that. I, if you go over to your settings, here's where you set the FPV mode. I have it set for quick capture which is as soon as you hit the button once and also for normal capture. Now you have to have these set up in conjunction in order to allow that. And you also have other settings, pretty much only using the FPV mode with the stabilization on for this. You can see how small it is and it has a strong magnet in there. As soon as you get on there, it pops right on and it begins charging. If you want to transfer to your computer, you can plug into this micro USB port right here. And that's how I 
normally will transfer my files. As you can see, this is my prototype Armitan Tadpole 3 inch, and I designed this mount for it in Fusion 360. This is actually the third iteration of this mount. The original one was this, which I designed before. I actually had the camera on hand, just looking up the dimensions online. It fit okay, but in a spin crash, it would fly out this way, I found. Then I designed this version, uh, which is close to the final version, but I needed to add a hole right here. And I also wanted to add a little bit of a lip protection on the front. So the third one, as you can see, has a little bit of a lip right there, which adds some protection for the lens and also keeps it in there. This um, craft only has two screw holes right here at the front. There's not any right there. So I designed this to kind of have some little tabs that you could put a zip tie over. And then when you put the battery on, that holds this down even firmer. So it's not going anywhere. There's not a ton of room on here. So you can see on the side, it's not super, um, but this thing is so light, even with the camera. So with the camera, the 450 milliamp 3S battery, the, all the weight of this thing is 150 grams with this on board. So let's go ahead and put it in there so you guys can take a look and see what it actually looks like. I usually just put the lens in the corner like that and just kind of put it in and make sure that the lip is covering it. And now it's installed and ready to go for a flight. Um, all you have to do is similar to a GoPro is you hit the button on the back right there in order to start recording. If you do that, it'll actually vibrate to give you a sensation that it is on and recording. If you push it, it'll vibrate to tell you that it's turning on and recording. And you can confirm that the white light is flashing. That means it is in record mode. Pretty nice. Now, FPV mode will run for a full five minutes, um, but like I said, I have had some issues with that. Um, this is an unprecedented amount of HD footage for this. The way that this thing actually flies in the air is so incredible. Armitan has really come up with a special frame here. And by putting this system on it, it can easily carry the additional 20 grams. And the mount is probably, you know, seven or eight grams. Um, all up weight with the 450 milliamp 3S battery that I use and this tiny camera is 150 grams total. So it's very, very light. Um, the footage on it looks good. The stabilization looks good. I sent a clip to a coworker of mine. He's not an FPV by any means. Um, he uses GoPros for motorcycle riding or getting videos of, of soccer or something like that. And so, but he is familiar with some of the FPV videos that I've showed him. And I sent him an example clip uh, saying that it didn't look that good. And his response was, look that good. It looks better than any video I've, you've ever showed me. So his response wasn't so nitpicky to some of the lower bit rate issues that I'm seeing in my eye. I think his response was due to the inbuilt stabilization, which is actually fairly reasonably good. Um, so now that we've covered the fact that It'll get you HD footage at 20 grams. You can record five minutes, which is totally usable for most types of FPV. Um, it has Bluetooth connectivity. It connects to this to charge wherever you go. You can see it's charging now. Let's get to some of the bads. Number one, this has like an eight gigabytes internal storage that I don't think is upgradable in any way. The usable section of that is six. 6 gigs or something like that and given that it'll tell you that you have like 22 minutes of recording at 1080 so that means if you're using fpv mode you really have four and a half shots per this thing total four and a half shots so you, this is not something you want to take with you on a full day of shooting i think originally the 60 second recording and they figured people would be doing that in combination with some hyperlapses meant that you might get 20 to 30 shots with this. But for our purposes, five at the max, probably four and a half, really. That's a bit of a downside. The image stabilization does work pretty good, um, but it doesn't know what to do if you do like a power loop or any kind of roll, anything where you cross the horizon, the software just doesn't know what to do. 
and it'll essentially make it look like you just did like a yaw spin. It won't flip, um, which I mean, I really want to get some cool freestyle like this is capable of doing freestyle on a smaller scale. It flies very similarly to my five inch Marmot also with space grade carbon. Uh, and so now I can accomplish some of the same maneuvers and get HD recording, but it can't quite do it. I guess you could turn the stabilization off, but that kind of defeats the purpose. Um, another bit of a gripe is that if you start the recording as you're putting it down and you don't have it level. So if I'm going like this to put it down to take off and I hit the button, um, when you take off, I noticed a few flights where the camera was like this. Sometimes it was as if I was at like a 60 degree angle sideways, but I wasn't. Sometimes it was fully like this. Well, that if it's fully 90 degrees, that's no problem, right? You can just flip it in post. Well, the problem is when you move around, it the image stabilization senses the horizon and corrects. So then you have a portion of the video that's off and a portion that's correct. So you can't flip the whole thing. It's, it's really just kind of a big pain. Uh, gripe number three is that this doesn't record in like any sort of known codec. It records in a proprietary garbage Insta360 Go format. Now, to be fair, they do have a downloadable tool that you can batch convert the files to something that's usable for any of your editors. I use DaVinci Resolve 16. So that process is fairly simple, but it's still one additional step when you're using this footage. Step uh, gripe number, what are we on? Four, five, I don't even know. There's, there's a lot, guys. Gripe number five is the bit rate is pretty low. The, that means that you're going to get some jagged, some blocks, some pixely, large pixely things. If you ever tried to upload your YouTube footage to go um, to, of, I'm sorry, if you ever tried to upload your GoPro footage to YouTube, you'll know that it often mangles the bit rate if you don't get the settings quite right. This kind of comes like this out of the box. If I look at it, you know, freshly converted, it's already kind of janky looking. Um, and so the, in the the footage is stable if you can keep yourself fairly level. You gotta you want to have your mind around that you're gonna get some sort of cinematic footage, but the quality is not quite a hundred percent there. So it looks like you're having a camera, like a cell phone camera on a nice gimbal, like a really expensive gimbal. It's doing a good job of getting stable, but the camera is from like a Motorola Razr flip phone from 2005, okay? Like it's just not that impressive looking as far as quality. It also doesn't really handle super low light or super bright light. Uh, I noticed that the super low light was not that great, but when I flew in super bright sunlight, uh, it was a little bit, it didn't know how to handle looking at the sun and not looking at the sun. The colors were a little off and that's some of those quality things. Then there's not really any way to be able to put an ND filter on this thing. So that's another gripe. And probably the biggest offense of all was that it randomly stops recording in the middle of a recording. Uh, I've probably done about 12 to 15 um, recordings with this so far in the few days I've had it. And it just stops randomly um, about 25% of the time. I've had it stop recording a good five times total, maybe six. And uh, I contacted Insta360. They said reformat the, uh, the card itself. You do that in the app, did that. Um, after it happened to me a couple of times, I actually got some really good footage that I missed out on. I was flying at a park and there was a nearby birthday party in the neighborhood. Somebody must have let go of one of those inflatable Mylar balloons with helium and it floated by and I just totally circled it slowly as we rose up together. It was going to be an incredible shot. I was so happy. I went to review the footage and that clip stopped recording at about 32 seconds. So then I thought, well, maybe it didn't take the setting for FPV mode. No, um, half of the time it'll stop recording after a minute. So that means it is using FPV mode. I had one that stopped at one minute 29. I had one that stopped at two and a half minutes. I had one that stopped at about three minutes. I had another one that stopped 
under a minute and it's just so frustrating it's like you can't trust this thing and so i'm wondering did i get a dud did i get a bad one but when i ask on the insta 360 groups so many people were coming forward saying they're dealing with the exact same issues um, some people were saying maybe it's due to heat that's part of the redesign of this mount i made sure that it was open on the sides front and back as well as you know so there's plenty of ventilation and when we're flying even something small like this and we're cruising we're still going 30 40 50 miles an hour and so that wind flow should allow for sufficient cooling for this thing it does definitely get warm when you're using it it gets warm when it's charging it gets warm a lot i mean there's a lot of electronics in the small little package so who is this for um this is for anybody that wants to go out take some cool fpv footage but i would really get in the habit of if you're trying to get a particular shot do it multiple times in case there's a failure um, i did that I, and i got the shot that i wanted to get there was a particular shot i wanted to get really low going down a track uh, where people would run and it was empty i thought that would be a cool shot and i did it like three or four times and only one of them got through because the camera kept failing um, that's really frustrating you can't really trust this so this is like a really cool toy but is it really ready for prime time? I'm waiting for Insta360 to contact me back. I'm like, hey guys, I'm working on a review for this. You know, Johnny Five Channel, Johnny Five Channel. Uh, they don't seem to care, you know. So if they don't care about me, they probably won't care about you. But if you don't mind that and you can deal with it, this really is a cool option. I like the fact that I could keep this with me in my pocket. And even if I was just walking around, I could hit record and then throw it up on this little necklace and just walk around. It's very inconspicuous. People are not gonna pay attention if you're walking around your neighborhood and see something going down. I kind of like this as an option to just have as a matter of fact generally, but because of the super um, fairly short battery life and the super small amount of non-user replaceable storage in this, it's almost like you really have to budget when you're actually gonna record something because the space will fill up so fast. So what do you think in the comments? Have you had the same experience I had? Have you had better experience? Have you had the same, have you had worse? Um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna end up keeping this long-term or not, but I wanted to get the word out there because a lot of reviews have started to come back extremely positive and I wanted to let you know it's not all positive. Thanks guys.